ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick CC is back with another banger. Another banger. How The Rock held Hollywood hostage for 10 years straight. Damn, The Scorpion. The Scorpion, that was like, that was The Rock's like first music, uh, first uh, movie, right? First music. What is this? Not now. How much I weigh now? Oh, wow. Oh, he's losing weight. Wait, is this true? Okay. Like, what made him change? I guess it doesn't matter as long as he's, you know, doing what he wants. I guess the video's got, got to him, huh? Johnson has had a major... Yo, Standing Tall? Gridiron Gate. Wait, these were bangers. What's the movie when he was in, like, in a ballerina thingy? He, he, did a, he did a movie with that little girl. Box office film every single year for the past two decades. Nearly all of them were an overwhelming financial success, with the exception of a few. Over the years, The Rock has stamped... Tooth Fairy. Tooth Fairy was goaded. Tooth Fairy was goaded, bro. ...himself as... Game Plan? ...one of the most successful... Wait, Game Plan? Hold on. Because that movie sounds familiar too, but I th it's for sure Tooth Fairy. Uh, Game Plan. Let me see. Oh. Wait, am I am I remembering things wrong? I thought he was in about Wait, hold on, hold on. Tooth fairy. What the fuck? Wait. It was game plan. I think it was game plan. Yeah, it was game plan. Let me see. Yeah, game plan is definitely the movie I'm talking about because this is the little girl. That was. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I remember this. This is the one. All right, let's get back to it and beloved entertainers of all time worth a whopping 320 million dollars he has hollywood in a chokehold and although many people think the rock is simply just this perfect family friendly brand that sold out left the wwe and was embraced with open arms into the film world that couldn't be further from the truth i was about to say sold out like yo people just get people want to get mad about anything like bro if selling out is leaving leaving one job to go pursue another that is like financially better, then what the fuck? I guess everybody got to be a sellout then. Like you should not be in one place just because people are going to call you names if you don't. Every single time he entered a new industry, he was rejected and had to prove himself. And with his back against the wall, he formulated a plan. Did you see but did you see the news about Dwayne Johnson being in a 3 billion kidnapping lawsuit and is facing charges? Huh? Fuck out of here. That plan Cap. would be the catalyst to him absolutely dominating Hollywood for the past 10 years. Stay hydrated. Many of you got your first introduction to The Rock through the WWE. Even though he never saw himself pursuing this career, Dwayne Johnson was quite literally born. I think it was 15 years old there. How? How? Born to be a wrestler. His father, Wade Douglas Bowles, was a former professional wrestler who wrestled under the ring name Rocky Johnson. Through the late 60s to mid 70s, he was a major star in California. Rocky wrestled with the WWF in the 1980s, where he and his partner Tony Atlas what? were the first black tag team champions in WWE history. But it wasn't just his father who has wrestling roots. The Rock's mother, Atta, was adopted into the most iconic Samoan wrestling family of all time, the Anawai family. Her father is wrestler High Chief Peter Maivia, and his wife Leah is one of wrestling's first female promoters, which makes The Rock related, through marriage of course, to the Wild Samoans, Yokozuna, Rikishi, Umaga, and Roman Reigns. What? It seemed like his destiny was written for him the moment he was born. However, The Rock did not 
want to be a wrestler. Growing up, Johnson moved around a lot. He briefly spent his childhood in Auckland, New Zealand, then he moved to Charlotte, North Carolina briefly, then to Hamden, Connecticut, where he attended elementary and middle school. When he was 12, they moved to Hawaii, Dante where his is the mom's best family judge lived. Ever. That's when it got rough, he says. His dad worked less, which sent them into poverty yes, and led to fights with the family. He saw from a very young age how financially unstable a wrestling career would be. Frustrated with being poor, Roman he Reigns, started though? stealing, then getting arrested. He began getting into fights with kids at school and turning into an angry kid. As a 13-year-old child, he was lost and lacking guidance. He used to be in the motherfucking streets. So the family streets. relocated again to Nashville, Tennessee before settling. Put those spaghetti... Spaghetti, spaghetti. I love spaghetti seamals. Playing in Pennsylvania, Dwayne attended Freedom High School in Bethlehem Township in the Lehigh Valley. Freedom was his fourth high school in three years. In three. Wait. Is that uh? Is that what's his name? Woo! <laughs> Ain't no way that's your principal. <laughs> Who is that? Is that Ric Flair? <laughs> Uh, different states. Johnson found himself outside the principal's office at each school, frequently encountering conflict <laughs> and participating fuck? in petty crime. Before the age of 17, he was arrested multiple times for fighting, theft, and check fraud. His life was on a fast track to nowhere, until one teacher would change his life. After settling an argument with Jody Quick, the school's football coach- Does this man have a doc? Like a document? Doc Docu-series or some shit? he asked Dwayne to play football for Liberty. On the football field, Johnson was given the structure and discipline his life otherwise lacked. Quick became the strong male figure Dwayne needed since his father... Yeah, I know, he, I know he got a show, but you know how shows don't really be like, you know, it kind of just be like a... Because you know how The Rock, not The Rock, Chris Rock has like a show, but it's like, it's not really like a documentary on his life. It's just like kind of comedic. He was usually away working. As a six foot four, 230 pound junior, Johnson wreaked havoc from the defensive line. He fell in love with the game. It gave his life purpose. Coach Quick check it sat out. him down and said, listen, your family doesn't have any money. Your grades are average. If you're going to get out of this town and make a different life for yourself, football is the vehicle. Mm. Dwayne's mentality did a 180 from being a rebellious criminal to a fully focused and determined young man obsessed with making it. He became a three sport athlete, football, wrestling, and w track coach? And field. Liberty High School competed in the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference in which the wrestling programs have been ranked best in the nation by Win Magazine and have been described as among the nation's best in the sport for nearly three decades. And despite his wrestling talents, Football was where his heart was. Dwayne had only played for two years, but he drew the attention of NCAA Division I collegiate programs. College football recruiters ranked him among the nation's top 10 high school defensive tackles. He received offers from Penn State, UCLA, Clemson, Florida State, and dozens of other top Everybody programs, but he eventually accepted a full cream. athletic scholarship from the University of Miami, whose football program was then one of the best in the nation. Do you think comedians will still be around with this generation? It ain't the same. Hell no, bro. Bro, Bill Burr would have been uh, canceled at his first like performance, like his first show. It would have been done. And Richard Pryor would have been the fuck out of here. Uh, Eddie Murphy would be canceled. Um, like we would not have these, like all like. And he's a goat. He's a goat. But literally every comedian would have to be like telling Kevin Hart type jokes. You know, like have Kevin Hart type comedy and it would just be that comedy kevin hart's comedy is good but it's like we need you know sometimes we need you know just some you know derogatory jokes bro some fucked up jokes in 1990, he made an amazing first impression to the Miami coaches. And there were for sure, there were for sure be no Dave Chappelle. He would be the, he would be fucking out of here. He was fast, he was strong, and he worked harder than anyone. But before he got to play his first game, he suffered a shoulder injury, which made the coaches shift their focus from Dwayne to Warren Sapp, who would go on to be an NFL Hall of Famer. Mm. Over the years, he had four knee surgeries and lived in the shadow of Sapp. He ended his Miami career with 78 tackles and four sacks. No NFL coaches wanted to take a chance. Society doesn't control everything. I mean, we talking about like, you know, the entertainment business. They kind of do. If we're talking about the entertainment business, they kind of do. Have you noticed that the Little Mermaid is now black? <laughs> Did you did you did you notice that the Little Mermaid is all back? Did you know that now the Ghostbusters are now all women? <laughs> the Ghostbusters are now all women, man. Uh, they control a lot.
chance on him. However, the Calgary Stampeders in the Canadian Football League gave him a shot. He was making 250 Canadian dollars per week, which is basically equal to minimum wage, but it didn't last long. Just two months after being signed to the practice roster, he was cut. He returned home to Tampa in 1995 with $7 in his pocket and no future. Dwayne really thought the NFL was going to be his career, and he fell into a deep depression when he realized his dreams were not going to come to fruition. The only backup plan was wrestling. The woman Ghostbusters failed and they went back to the OG. I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why, bro. However, the instability of finances and constant traveling destroyed their family and his childhood. Mm. His father did not want Dwayne to go down that path, but Dwayne had run out of options and eventually his father gave in and decided to train him. In 1996, Damn, Dwayne began his professional fire. wrestling career. It took him less than one- That's kind of how I'm feeling, bro. I don't want Demir to be streaming, bro. I don't want him to be streamer. I don't want him to be you know, like YouTuber or nothing like that, bro. But it's like, if it happens, it happens. But <sighs> bro, I just, this is not how people are and you can't really do shit. You like you can't do anything year to get signed to the WWF for obvious reasons. He was the son and grandson of two wrestling legends. He didn't have to grind in amateur leagues as long as other people. November 17th, 1996, Madison Square Garden, Perry, the Survivor Series. You. He made his WWF debut as Rocky Maivia, combining his father and grandfather's ring names. Nicknamed the Blue Chipper, Johnson was hyped as WWF's first third generation wrestler mm. and was pushed heavily despite his wrestling inexperience. That hair is crazy. In elimination tag match, Rocky secured the victory. Three months later, he won the company's Intercontinental Championship and wrestled his first WrestleMania match the following month. However, fans did not accept him with open arms. WWF fans became increasingly hostile towards Maivia with chants of die Rocky die being heard during his matches. As many of you know, wrestling is scripted and the outcomes are predetermined. Go. It's like a live action reality show. But one thing that is not fake about wrestling is the fan engagement. Wrestlers yeah. get their fan base from their image or personality displayed on the microphone. If the fans do not like you and the show's writers can't find a way for you to get on their good side, you will lose your job. Yo, see? <laughs> Literally, they control the narrative. I know that's like extreme for wrestling, but like that's how it is, bro. Rocky Maivia was a clean-cut, happy-go-lucky good guy who wasn't resonating with the audience. After losing his Intercontinental Championship and suffering a legitimate knee injury, Johnson disappeared from television for months. But he wasn't going to let the WWF writers ruin his chances of him being a star. It was time for a rebrand. In August 1997, he returned but with a noticeably more aggressive demeanor, flashing out at the audience whenever they booed him. He deaded the Rocky Maivia name and referred to himself in the third person as The Rock. He had officially turned heel, which is a wrestling term for a wrestler portraying a villain or acting as an antagonist. Everybody loves villains. A self absorbed narcissist, The Rock regularly insulted the audience, fellow wrestlers, and interviewers whenever he could. The character worked because it came Set naturally and it didn't take long for the audience to start warming up to his newfound persona. He didn't know it then. Look at he was all these dick riders. Look at all these dick riders. From 1997 to 2002, The Rock became a phenomenon, dubbed the people's champion. He was debatably the most beloved wrestler in the industry. Bring your Rudy Pooh candy asses. Just bring it. Oh my gosh. Just bring it to If you're some man. What the rock? You're not undisputed champion, so shut up, bitch. <laughs> shut up, bitch. Yo, I'm surprised you were even able to post these clips. Because WWE be tripping. I got to hear that shut up, bitch. You're not undisputed champion, so shut, shut up, up, bitch. <laughs> From the single eyebrow raise to his numerous catchphrases to his over-exaggerated mannerisms, The Rock established himself as the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. At this point in his career, up, The Rock bitch. had surpassed the legacy of anyone in his heritage, having become one of the most decorated champions in WWE history. Go, go. Also in the early 2000s, wrestling was at its peak in average viewership and ratings. 90s, baby. The Rock baby. being the most charismatic and marketable wrestler Wrestler and then the most popular 2000s. time in wrestling history was a perfect storm that would change his life forever. He figured the transition from wrestling to acting wouldn't be that hard. After all, wrestling is acting, and most of the time it's live, so you only get one take. He began dabbling in TV with cameos Nathan, on cut it that out, 70 bro. show, Star Trek Voyager, and Saturday Night Live. In fact, 
After his SNL debut, one of the most respected film critics of all time, Roger Ebert, said this. Have you met The Rock before? This guy is going to be a major movie star. He should get out of wrestling as soon as possible. That prediction couldn't have been more true. In 2001, Dude. Dwayne made his... Oh my god! The money returns. <sighs> we all start somewhere, man. What the fuck is this? first feature film debut in The Mummy Returns, which grossed roughly $435 million at the box office. What? Wait, wait, hold on. The main thing I heard about The Mummy was always like the rock shit. Was this movie actually like, was that a success? Was that movie a success? I always thought, I always had the like, thought that it was bad. <laughs> like that it bombed horribly. Despite only having 15 minutes of screen time, Johnson was paid $5.5 million for- Wait, Brendan Fraser? Wait, wait, that's the same mu- Oh my god. Oh, it's The Mummy Returns. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my gosh. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot that those two were even linked. For his portrayal of the scorpion i gotta rewatch it this i gotta rewatch it earned him an entry into the guinness book of world records as the highest payment for an untested actor this just goes to show you how big of a superstar he was and how much his brand was worth he reprised his role everybody just hated the cgi okay so that's yeah that's I always thought these were two different films. Well, as the Scorpion King in the prequel the following year, earning over 180 million at the box office. But again, wrestling fans were not happy with his newfound Hollywood success. When he returned to wrestling at 2002 SummerSlam, he received a negative crowd response during his match. When he tried to do a post-show speech, the crowd within the stadium booed him. This put a sour taste in his mouth, and The Rock would disappear from wrestling for another year. To make matters worse, his 2003 film The Rundown was considered a flop. Nah, fuck that. I don't care. That's just a cult classic. I love that movie. Since the film did not profit, this left him in limbo feeling unsure of which career to pursue. His heart was still in wrestling, but he needed a rebrand for the second time, and that's exactly what he was going to do. In 2003, The Rock turned heel again and started a new persona, dubbed Hollywood Rock. With a new look and a shaved head, his new persona as a snobby Hollywood jock who looks down on the wrestling community earned him a lot of haters, but you could tell he was having fun and wasn't afraid to <laughs> lean even harder into this character. He eventually won over the audience because of his charisma and hilarious jokes. Plus, he was still a legend at this point, so it was hard to pretend to hate him for much longer. Many wrestling fans think The Rock is at his best when he is in his Attitude Era. Sadly for them, this was all- Wait, hold on, hold on. This left him in limbo, feeling unsure of which career to pursue. His heart was still in wrestling, but he needed a rebrand for the second time, and that's exactly what he was going to do. In 2003, The Rock turned heel a new persona as a okay. You could tell he was having fun, and wasn't afraid to lean even harder into this character. He eventually won over the audience because of his charisma and hilarious jokes. Plus, he was still a legend at this point, so it was hard to pretend to hate him for much longer. Many wrestling fans think The Rock Nothing. is at his best. Nothing. I thought... I I zoned out. I'm like, I was tripping. I was thinking about something. Bro, I was thinking about the like that movie. That was that was like such a good movie. And I was, it was on the TV the other day. It's so good, bro. I'm sorry. When he is in his attitude era. Sadly for them, this was all very short. Yo, okay, y'all are so annoying with this fucking... Yeah, the, the, I do anything slightly like that is normal shit. Oh my God, he's 30. <laughs> oh my God, he's 30. He's old. Like, shut up oh my god short lived the rock's contract with the wwe ended in 2004 and he quietly retired without making a big announcement like y'all don't be in class and then the teacher calling you like can you repeat what i just said i'm sorry i didn't i didn't hear i wasn't paying attention but uh it's not like the whole class gonna turn around and be like damn nigga like is you a senior bro you were you a freshman just like us with your old ass the 32 year old knew putting his body on the line would ultimately catch up to him this decision would allow him to officially i tried to do that eyebrow thing for the longest when i was younger still can't do it but at least i can wink like i can't imagine being an adult and you don't even know how to wink that shit's crazy actually start his full-time hollywood acting career even though Dwayne was a superstar he struggled to find success yo that is not the look <laughs> That is not the look, man. That is that is terrifying. Holy shit. That's early on as an actor. From 2004 to 2006, he starred in Walking Tall, which was received well by... 
Another one. Another banger, bro. I liked it. Loved it. Cult, cult favorite. Fans, but hated by critics. Okay, yeah, yeah. Loved by fans. Hate. Who the fuck? Who cares about critics? I'm not going to lie. I don't care, bro. Anytime, I think any of us, when we try to get recommendations for a movie, we just scroll through our feed or like, like see what people are saying in chat or some shit like that. Whenever we be like, yo, what did you think of this movie? We just throw, scroll, stroll through the comments of what people are saying. We don't Google like the top critic or something, some shit like that. Because what the fuck do they know at this point, man? What do they know at this point? Get some throwaway roles like the crime comedy Be Cool and the film adaptation of the popular video game Doom, which failed to break even financially. However, the comedy thriller Southland Tales and Gridiron Gang performed a little bit better. I feel like people whose job... Oh, that's like that's literally the face Nick Cannon was making in, in Drumline, like the whole entire movie, bro. Um, But no, I feel like if it's your job, if it's your job to sit down and just like critique something, you're gonna try too hard to do the critiquing that you're not gonna actually enjoy the movie. I miss when he I miss when he was in stuff too. I never seen this. That's crazy. Is that Vin Diesel? financially but none of these films indicated that the rock had a promising career ahead of him realizing his career was looking shaky oh my god <laughs> yo i'm about to just send i'm about to just take like screenshot of this picture and just send it to the rock every day until he sees it <laughs> He decided to change his persona for the third time. Now he would take on the role as the gentle giant. He slimmed down his appearance, which let's be honest, even a slim version of The Rock is still a 200 plus pound beast. But he started seeing box office success when he appeared in more kid friendly yeah! films like Walt Disney's The Game Plan. And Yo, going kid friendly, like that shit works for a lot of people, bro. Ice Cube did Race that to shit. Mountain, and he took off. Get Smart and The Tooth Fairy. Oh my gosh, Race to That's that's literally these are literally the two movies we were talking about. Get Smart. Oh my gosh, bro. All of which made over $100 million at the box office. The only problem with these movies is that he wasn't really acting. The Rock is actually the Tooth Fairy. But seriously, The Rock <laughs> is known in real life as being a really nice guy, very friendly and supportive. So in this one so th this was the tooth fairy right okay i knew it was something like some ballerina type shit that i i knew it i knew it okay in these movies he's just being casted as himself but why wouldn't they put that on the cover like wouldn't that why wouldn't that be on the box cover i'd be like what the fuck him in the him him in a dress i gotta see this movie yes <laughs> he really wanted to be in action movies since i mean he's the rock after three family films in a row, he was faced with yet another problem of boxing himself into a genre. Look at these white kids, man. Who is this? Is this Jake Paul? Yo, Chad, who is it? What is he do? What is he doing now? These look like it's like such the generic, the most generic white kids I can th like I could think of. But I feel like I've seen him in something. Hunger Games. He's in one of those dystopian movies. Like The Maze or some shit. I think she is too. That would be hard for him to escape from. So he called a meeting with his agents and developed a vision to take Hollywood hostage. He wanted to be Will Smith, but different and bigger. I don't know what that mm. means, he said, but I can see it. And I have these. He held up his hands, and I need everybody to see it with me. His agents had no idea what he was talking about, so The Rock fired them and got a new team. That's how you gotta be, good shit. The plan was to avoid family-friendly films for a while. This plan was not about making money. It was about grabbing Hollywood by the balls and making it his. So he decided to change his image and kickstart his fourth time reinventing himself. He shaved his head bald for good, then put on a lot of muscle Ain't mass. They the and kids from Bridge to Taribatha. That's that's yo wait. Hold on. Bridge to. Okay, so yeah. Okay, that's her. 
No, this dude, I remember him. He was like in everything. He was in uh, Zuth 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 Zuthora? Zuth Zuthora? I couldn't, bro, you cannot escape this nigga's face, bro. Isn't he, uh, no, wait. Who's the dude in Kingsman? Okay, no, this is somebody different. Right? Here's another guy. Damn, they look alike, though. turned into a more rugged warrior rather than his previous handsome chiseled model look. He pursued more action films. The Other Guys was a buddy comedy that saw success and was a step in the right direction, yeah. but the most important role of his whole career up until this point was Faster. This was the first time he had a lead role in an action film after Doom flopped. Mm. Faster was an interesting film. The Rock was a criminal seeking vengeance. He was cold-blooded and didn't have much dialogue in the whole film. It didn't perform that well financially, but it was a transition point for him because he was about to get the I haven't seen this. I got to I got to I just got to watch it for the for the for the history, you know. The role that would kickstart his Hollywood takeover. Fast 5, 2011. Oh, Dwayne entered shit. the Fast and Furious. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. This is when yeah, I think this is when everything like was like different. Guys, as Luke Hobbs. Hobbs is a diplomatic security service agent who enters the movie investigating the deaths of three DEA agents. But his form of interrogating a criminal is by throwing them around the room and beating the snot out of them until they talk. The Fast franchise was already super successful at this point, and this one was their peak so far, $640 million in the global box office. Plus this film is widely regarded by fans as the best out of the dozen. Really? Well, my favorite has always been the second one. But damn, I feel like it's been so long since I've seen Fast Five that I don't even remember anymore. And as many of you know, landing a permanent role in an action film franchise as big as this is basically like hitting the Hollywood lottery. You become known and loved all around the world and could easily have a stable career. This was exactly what The Rock needed to kick his career into overdrive. From 2012 to 2016, Dwayne had to prove to the world that he was here to stay. And he did just that. He had a brief return to wrestling to host WrestleMania... Bro, God, something about Patrick is like he always finds like the perfect like music and the perfect tone when he talks about stuff. Cause like you hear this music in the background, I'm like, damn, I feel like I'm really watching like a Netflix video. The world that he was here to stay, and he did just that. He had a brief return to wrestling to host WrestleMania 30 and have an iconic title match against John Cena. It was his first bout in over seven years. Shout out to John Cena for getting into the movie, getting into movies too. I'm glad he's like gotten some good roles. Uh, because I ain't gonna lie, that Marine movie was not fucking it. He got an offer to perform in front of 85,000 people live, and he couldn't refuse. But he never had any intentions on staying long term. In that same year, 20... Yeah, and Dave Bautista. 2013, he did five movies. Snitch, which some consider to be his most underrated acting performance. Yeah, I, I remember Retaliation, that. Retaliation, Empire State, Pain and Gain... Fa Pain and Gain! Underrated acting performance. G.I. Joe Retaliation, Empire State, Pain and Gain... He killed this shit. He, I remember seeing this shit in theaters. He killed this shit, bro. This was a good movie. And it was based on a true story. It was like crazy shit that would happen. And they'd be like, yes, this part is still true. Or some shit like that. That's when it like, I was like, that's fired. Because like, you just never know what nowadays with some movies. Some movies that are based on real shit. But I just like how they said it on the screen. Nah, this is, this really still happened. Gain, Fast and Furious 6. Nah, that By movie the end of 2013, fire, Forbes that. named Johnson the top grossing actor, with his films collectively bringing in $1.3 billion, billion dollars worldwide. Dollars. In 2014, he did Hercules. Michael Bay can't move. Bro, I like Mike, Michael Bay's movies, though. Like, I get it, bro. He liked the sun too much, and it'd be shiny and all this, and everything blows up, but that's the shit I type. That, that's the type of shit I like, man. In 2015, he did Furious 7 and San Andreas. In 2016, Central Intelligence. The Rock was getting a lead role in a major action film each year. His fame was at an all-time high, and he successfully rebranded himself as the rugged action star that's also sensitive that he knew he deserved to be. And then he did but this was only the beginning. The real takeover was about to begin when he started his production company, Seven Bucks Productions. What? But before I get into that, there's something very important to consider. Over the span of what was now 15 years in Hollywood, Dwayne has created 
created a reputation for being a hardworking and reliable employee. In a space where actors notoriously show up late to set, or come in intoxicated and hungover, or just generally act like divas, Dwayne has managed to stay focused and complete the task at hand, showing up to work on time while getting along with fellow cast members and crew. He will remember everybody's name, from craft services to the camera operators. The Rock is every producer and director's dream employee. Mm. Rampage director Brad Payton, who has directed Johnson three times now, broke down exactly why every filmmaker should have him on their team. Dwayne is one of those guys where you present the challenge and he is going to succeed come hell or high water. When I need Dwayne to do something that's difficult, it's the equivalent of being able to be, you see that wall? I need you to run through that wall. And he's like, that wall? And I'm like, yeah, that wall. And he's like, Fuck that wall. And I'm like, all right, roll camera. Here we go. Directors will tell him to redo a line 15 times and he just does it. No questions, no fights. He's excited to work and brings good energy around him. This is a huge reason why he gets casted for so many films. Because he's easy to work with. I ain't gonna lie, bro. We was doing, uh, we was doing Gamerhood. We was doing Gamerhood, and we had to run through some lines. And I'm just like, damn, bro. Yeah. That wasn't the shot, man. The Rock versus John Cena that won't is it? one of the best WrestleMania behind Kane versus Undertaker. Bro, after the third time, I'm like, yo, I'm not doing this shit again, bro. <laughs> I ain't doing this shit again, man. Y'all got it. The trade-off. Just cut, is cut me out of the scene. That he basically has to play the same character in every film, but that's exactly what he wants. Mm. No one's going to see me play a borderline psychopath suffering from depression, he says. My problem is- a horny little pig boy who needs you to slather me in mud, spank me multiple times, and to smother me with your behind right on my face for me to learn my lesson and during that I will be whining and licking your feet so they will be squeaky clean. What the- did I just hear? Question mark this dick in your mouth, nigga. That shit is so fucking stupid. Yo, we gotta get rid of that. Yo, come Thursday, I gotta make sure that shit is handled, bro. I gotta I gotta make sure that shit is handled. There's no way that should be a whole paragraph of that shit should be popping up is I have a relationship with an audience around the world. For years, I've built a trust with them that they're going to come to my movies and feel- That's what I'm saying. Digital footprint. Like, that shit niggas just don't care, bro. I'm a dirty little pig. Like, what? Feel good. So every once in a while, you have to drop this card, which is, you're going to have to find another actor. We need to figure something out. Otherwise, I'm not going to do the movie. Mm. Although The Rock is extremely limited in the roles he will play, he's consistent and he sticks to his strengths, which is respectable. So when you combine his work ethic, extreme likability, lack of problematic qualities, and a well-oiled machine of people behind him, what you get is the biggest Hollywood takeover of coming, all time. Tripping. Seven I've bucks Last Dono's mama def should have swallowed. Damn. I didn't even know he had his own production company. Productions is the name of his film studio that was founded in 2012, but really kicked into gear around 2016. And yeah, I was about to say, what films have come out of that? 2017. His production studio will create the vision for a film that has The Rock as the lead role. Since they know his strengths and weaknesses as an actor, they can write the scripts and produce the scenes in a way that benefits him the most, which usually leads to reboots of old movies or using other recognizable brands. Mm. These movies are basically safe investments. Plus, he doesn't have to audition for the role since it's literally written for him, which saves a lot of time. From there, they will partner with another production studio, such as Paramount Pictures, Columbia Pictures, New Line Cinema, DC, Disney, or any smaller company to produce the films. Since they are partnering, that means... So, sorry YouTube, something was just pinned. And it says, and I quote... Um, Dante has the nastiest, sloppiest, wettest, most toe-curling, spine-tingling, mind-blowing, life-changing, soul-snatching <laughs> head ever. Yo, you know what? Yo, I think, I think, yo, Theory, I think you were the mod that they were talking about. When they were trying to pinpoint the mod, yo, see that paragraph right there? That needs to go. What the fuck? Good pussy is when a woman is... <laughs> Yo, we cannot have that, bro. We cannot have that. Yo, come Thursday, all that shit needs to be gone. It needs to be gone or the, or the bag is done. The bag is over with, bro. Who took the time to write this shit? Dicks are so cute. When you hold one in your hand and it starts twitching like it's nuzzling you. 
Dwayne has ownership in the films he's making. It's also worth mentioning that likely means he is investing his own money into the films as well, risking tens of millions of dollars. Where most actors are likely only getting a salary, Go. Dwayne is getting royalties for a lifetime, plus he's building up the value of his company. Mm. Similar to what Rob Deerdeck did, he produced Ridiculousness through his own company for 10 years, then sold it for 200 million. So while The Rock is on set filming a movie, his team already knows exactly how long it's going to take and will be ready for him to film the next movie as soon as he is done with the current one. For example, in 2017 and 2018. See, that's smart. That's like, that's, that's, hmm. And I definitely see the vision, bro. You build something up, you build something up, and then you get it to a point where you've built it up so much and it looks, everything's great about it. Then you sell it off, bro. Then you sell it off, bro. That's, that's just... That's the way to go. In he released these four films, Baywatch, Jumanji, Rampage, and Skyscraper. I like Rampage, I like, Skyscraper was kind of forgettable, I'm not gonna lie. Baywatch began filming in February 2016 all over the USA. Seven months later, in September of 2016, Jumanji began filming in Hawaii. Jumanji so once was The fun, Rock is funny. done with Baywatch, he goes over to Hawaii and begins the next film. Then seven months after Jumanji in April of 2017, he goes to Chicago to film Rampage. Then four months later in August of 2017, he goes to Vancouver to film Skyscraper. And also while he's working on these films, he's doing promo tours and press- I'm not reading that runs for the previous ones. There is no downtime, there are no auditions, there is no preparation for a new character. The Rock has turned his brand into a machine that uses the same formula in every film and pumps out two to three movies per year that are generating hundreds of millions of dollars. Meanwhile, during all of this, his team is writing and pitching movies two to five years in the future, so The Rock never has to have a moment where he is not filming. From 2017 to 2022, they released 14 movies nearly three blockbuster movies per year, and they have dozens more planned for the future. Wait. Nearly three blockbuster movies per year, and they have dozens more planned for the- Red Notice was, was, was good. God Red Notice 2? So Bad Bunny is supposed to be in a street fight match at Backlash this Saturday. What the fuck is WWE cooking? They finna make hella cash. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um. I just seen that nigga slap the uh, Rey Mysterio's son or some shit. I don't know what the fuck was happening. Um, Red Notice 2, a third Red Notice film, Ball and Chain, Teddy and the Guardians of the Night, John Henry and the Statesman, Alpha Squad 7, The King, San Andreas 2, I'm sorry, Emergency Contact, still Team 666, Doc Savage, Untitled Jumanji, Next Level Sequel, Untitled Big Trouble in Little China. Untitled Jungle Cruise sequel. Okay. Hobbs and Shaw sequel. Oh yeah, he's he's on it. The future. But the most important and life-changing role was his portrayal of DC and now Comics he, anti- Now he's in a soup like now he's in superhero shit. Hero Black Adam. However, Oh, San Andreas the Earthquake movie. Things kind of ended in a disaster, and many are starting to question if The Rock's ego is starting to self-sabotage. All the way back in 2006, Johnson was initially approached to portray the character Shazam, but he expressed interest in the film's antagonist, Black Adam. By 2014, development for the series finally began when Warner Bros. and DC began planning a slate of superhero films for its shared universe. The See, bro, that's when y'all fucked everything up, bro. Everybody want to be a shared universe, I'm just saying, man. Notice how Superman standing in front while Batman in the back like a bitch holding his cape up. DC Extended Universe. That same year, Johnson confirmed his attachment to the film and decided he ultimately wanted to play Black Adam. To reiterate, getting a lead role as a superhero or a villain is probably the most coveted position in an actor's career. Black Adam was I. DC and Marvel actors will receive praise for the next century for their roles. If you hit big in one of these movies, you will it used, it used to be like that. It used to be like that. Honestly, your time's up. All right? Landing a superhero movie now is like, it, 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 it's, it's, it's not it, man. It, it's not it, bro. I'm just saying, like, come on, bro. Please just let this shit die, man. Like, landing a superhero movie is not, like, the, the, the make of your career anymore. Like, landing a superhero movie is the same way of landing, like, the main character from a book. Like, yo, this film came from a book, and it's about these kids. Yeah, I feel like that kind of era of shit is already over with. He prays for the next cent. We had the Twilights. We had the Harry Potters. We had the goddamn, uh, 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 To Kill a Mockingjay, or whatever the fuck it's called. 
century for their roles. If you hit big in one of these movies, you are legitimately set for life. So it's obvious why Dwayne wanted it so bad. However, come 2017, Hunger Games. Yeah, Hunger Games. We had the Lord of the Rings. Like, bro, they, they, they just finding any t type of book now. Like the fucking Maze Runners. All this other shit, it's like, what are we doing now? Johnson began having issues with the movie's direction. When the first draft of the movie came to us, it was a combination of Black Adam and Shazam, two origin stories in one movie. Literally everyone involved in the production loved the script and were ready to greenlight the movie, besides The Rock. He felt like he would be doing Black Adam a disservice, so he petitioned for Adam to get his own separate film. Warner Bros. trusted him. They took him out of Shazam and put a Black Adam solo movie in development. This is where chaos ensued. Firstly, I mean, he wanted it done right though, you know? He wanted it done right. That's kind of like with Ryan Reynolds, where he didn't, he didn't like how Deadpool was, and he was like, yo, we gotta do this again. Johnson was set to produce the film with members of Seven Bucks Productions along with Bo Flynn and Flynn Picture Co. Meaning Johnson had direct control over everything. He used this control to acquire writer Adam Sitzkill, who co-wrote Johnson's Rampage in 2018. Adam would write the screenplay for Black Adam. See, this is me though. Like, I'm not so deep into this superhero shit. So it's like, if The Rock comes along and fucks up, um, and fucks up Black Adam, I don't even know who the fuck Black Adam is. So it's like, I didn't care. <laughs> I was watching the movie. I was like, oh shit. Okay. That was kind of cool. Meanwhile, you go to Twitter and YouTube and everybody's like, oh my God, I can't believe you did this. Da, da, da. I'm like, yo, I'm sorry, but like, I ain't that deep into it, man. Once the script was completed, Johnson recruited director Jaume Colette Serra, who he worked alongside on Jungle Cruise. Jaume At this bad. point, Johnson had received the solo project he wanted and hired- Bro, she likes, she don't even want to be there. The team he wanted. All that was left to do was produce the film. However, due to the pandemic and commitments to the film Jumanji and Red Notice, production for Black Adam was delayed, which led to fans being disappointed. Initially, Johnson was first meant to appear. This was so good, especially seeing it in theaters. This was amazing. As Black Adam and Suicide Squad in 2021, but these plans were abandoned when writer and director Gavin O'Connor left the film in 2018. Filming for Black Adam was completed sometime in mid-22 and was released in October of that year, and some consider it to be a flop. The movie cost about $200 million to produce and was said to have at least a $100 million marketing cost. Sources at Warner Bros. say the movie will break even at $400 million. With the box office numbers totaling $393 million, it looks like the movie did profit. Plus, most of the reception from fans and critics was that- Why is was everyone so horny and say things so out of pocket like I want to see Garfield and John have a threesome with lasagna while don't I creepily watches from the window like control your chat. What? Who oh, said that? You said that? <laughs> Just okay. Average. What they expected. Which is on par for what The Rock is known to deliver. But many question if The Rock had not taken full creative control over this movie, if it would have maybe portrayed Black Adam as more of a dark, sinister anti-hero. Well, of course it would have, man. Maybe The Rock wasn't best for this role and fell short on his promises. Maybe his ego is finally catching up to him. It also doesn't help that he had a public feud with Vin Diesel that made him exit the Fast franchise. Now that shit was crazy. During the filming of The Fate and the Furious, the eighth installment of the Fast and Furious franchise, Johnson hinted at trouble behind the scenes. In a now deleted Instagram post, he called out some of his male co-stars, mm. sparking a feud between him and both Tyrese Gibson and Vin Diesel. When the film came out, viewers noticed their scenes were shot in such a way that indicated they may not have been on set at the same time, which was true. They were never on set together. Dwayne says their beef came down to a disagreement about professionalism. Vin and I had a few discussions including an important face-to-face -face in my trailer, he says. And what I came to realize is that we have a fundamental difference in philosophies on how we approach movie making and collaborating. Bruh, that information. y'all just supposed to be racing cars and shit. Like, how complicated can that shit get, man? didn't really help fans understand what was happening. Diesel later tried to make amends and reintroduce Johnson to the Fast and Furious franchise. However, Dwayne, although he regrets making that initial Instagram post, adamantly declined the offer and cemented that his time with the franchise was over. You know why? You know why? Cause The Rock doesn't need, Dwayne Johnson doesn't need Fast and Furious. I feel like Vin Diesel I wouldn't say Vin Diesel needs it, 
Because, you know, I mean, well, he probably does. Like, what is he? El what else is he doing besides that? I'm Groot. Like, I feel like he's he really, like, needs that to work. And he knows it'll work better if Dwayne Johnson's in it. So. This has led many to believe that The Rock is starting to walk away from any project where he doesn't call all of the shots. I mean, when, like, yeah, you can say what you want about it. Like, that shit's weird. And, like, who the fuck is he? Da -da -da. But he's built himself up in his name from like the dirt so once you're in that position you don't have to work or do what anybody else tells you to do you can do whatever the fuck you want you have made yourself he literally has his own produ production company he don't even need to do that Rage movie. he can just do his own i just wanted to donate my first time because i've been watching you for four years and it's my birthday love you bro stay safe i appreciate you man vin diesel is goaded and will always be so yeah vin diesel is definitely vin diesel is definitely goaded but i'm just saying i'm just saying I feel like he kind of is like leaning heavily on these movies because it brings in a lot of money right now. I don't know how much. Um, happy birthday, don't know. Uh, happy birthday. I don't know how much money it is for him to be called Groot for, for saying Groot. But um, oh, shit, I didn't even realize. Yo, happy birthday, bro. Happy birthday, man. I appreciate you. At the same time, didn't Vin Diesel play Lex Luthor? I don't know about that. But I know he played uh, Iron Giant, and I really love that movie. I love Iron Giant. Um, maybe he does deserve to call the shots. In just five years, Seven Bucks Productions has generated $3.3 billion in worldwide box office revenue. Dwayne Johnson is determined to outwork anyone who wants to compete with him. None of this success was handed to him. He was not lucky. He came from nothing and had been rejected and failed in every single industry he started in. See, that's what I'm saying. Patrick, get it? When you get to where you are, through all your trials and tribulations, can't nobody tell you do nothing. Can't nobody make you do nothing. If you got something you want to say, or it's something you want done right, and it's not being done the way you wanted to do, you can just bounce. You don't need it. They need you. I wouldn't say it's being like having an ego. I was saying it's, it's being like confident in yourself and who you are. You know? I don't know. I feel like only people would understand if like they were in that, if they like got through all the things that they went through. It's like if you w went to a job, like you're in a position where you don't really need the job, but you just, you just do it. Cause like, you know, it's just like your second job or whatever. And then they, they kind of talking crazy and you're like, yo, you know what? I'm good, bro. Like, I don't want to do this. I, don't, I ain't really agreeing with what you're saying right now. So boom, I'm out of here. I don't know, man. Like, can't nobody force you to do anything when you're when you are like a billionaire or like not billionaire, but like bringing in these billion dollar projects. And instead of wallowing in his sadness, he did the opposite. He reshaped and remodeled his image multiple times, developed an incredible work ethic, brings positive energy to everyone around him and stays out of controversy. Sure, he doesn't test himself creatively, but he sticks to what he's good at and what his fans expect hey. from him. Now at 50 years old, he's created a... 50. This nigga looks amazing. $300 million machine that will continue to work in his favor for years to come. Posted on a private jet. And he built it all with his own two hands. Hmm. Oh, man. Chat, if that don't inspire you, I don't know what will. If that don't inspire you to go out there and just get it, bro. Orange, origin of messages? What do you mean messages? <laughs> that shit is not... There is no way. Yo, there's no fucking way, bro. What the fuck is that? Hold on, bro. Stank and be stank and be loose. Yo, best barvis, thank you for the sub, man. I appreciate you, man. Bro wrote a fanfic. 
And that's what I'm saying. More and more people are writing this crazy ass shit, bro. But my thing is, why is the bots? Why is it in the bots thing? Like, why is it in the bots thing? Please let me know. That link not working. This isn't real. This looks like fake. <laughs> this looks like it looks fake. So it's got to be fake, bro. Mod set it as a command. See, that's my thing. Why is that a command, bro? How did I not know about these? Because I like I don't really see them. So for them to be popping up like how they're popping up is kind of bizarre to me. It's kind of bizarre to me right now, bro. Ah, the new meme. Hold on. Oh shit! So I was still recording.